invasive species affect wetlands. So first of all, what is a wetland? So a wetland is basically wetland. It's um, swamps and flies and uh, beaver ponds and things like that, any place where there's water and land. Now, um, invasive species are really taking over wetlands. You'll probably notice if you drive past any swamps or bogs or marshes, but you'll see all those beautiful purple flowers out there, the purple loosestrife, where they might be really pretty, but they really are causing a lot of problem in that they grow in really, really thick, and their root system is really thick. And so normally, it, plants in the wetland, there'd be lots of space in around the roots, if you think of cattails, and all the um, bugs and fish and frogs and turtles and crayfish would all be living in amongst those roots. But when things like uh, purple loosestrife or Phragmites common reef come in, they form really uh, thick, dense stands of plants and um, kind of outcompete for all the other native plants. And then because they're on the edge and there's no frogs or things like that, the mammals that live in the wetlands will have a really hard time finding food. Mammals like the possum. Now, Daisy here is actually a really old, old possum. And if you want to take a guess how old an old possum is, you'll probably be surprised because she's actually not even two yet. She maybe is just barely two. In the wild, possums only live to be about a year and a half. Now, uh, in captivity, they'll live probably to be about 30 years because they don't have to worry too much about um, predators and things like that, finding their own food. But in the wild, about a year and a half is, is an average age for a possum. Now, possums are marsupials. They're the only marsupials in North America. And basically, that means they have a pouch. So like a kangaroo or a wally, something like that, um, possums also have a pouch. Now, Daisy here is shy, so I'm not going to show you her pouch. But uh, what they do is, when the babies are born, they're about the size of your fingernail. And they're going to climb up and go inside the pouch. And they can have as many as 20 babies. They'll have a lot of them at one time. And they'll go and they'll stay inside the pouch until they're old enough to come out. And they'll still stay with the mom for a little bit on her back and around. And then when they get ready, uh, about six months of age, they're out on their own. Now, possums are nocturnal. And if you'll see Daisy here, she doesn't see very well because she's used to being at night. Um, but if you'll notice, her nose, just like the hedgehog is always going, has a really good sense of smell. And that's basically how they find their food. Now, the thing about possums is because they don't see very well, um, their kind of theory is, I'm just going to taste it and see if it's good. If they smell something that tastes good, they're going to try to eat it. So they really are not fussy. They eat all kinds of food. They'll eat um, any kind of eggs or fruits or vegetables or bugs. And one of the things they really love are ticks. So it's really good to have a possum around because they can eat a lot of ticks. And they'll keep the tick population down. They have the most teeth of any land mammal. They have over 50 teeth in their mouth. So if you see a possum, they're going to show you all their teeth. They're not aggressive at all. They're mostly, um, it's all about the threat. So they're going to open their mouth, they're going to hiss, they're going to show you all those teeth. But unless you bother them, they're really not going to bother you at all. The other thing about possums, if you'll see around her nose, she has all these whiskers. And what she does is those help her to find food. So if she's someplace, it's dark, uh, she doesn't see very well, and she, the whole thing kind of smells like maybe a mouse nest. If something moves, it's going to wiggle her whisker, and she's going to know that it's there, and she'll be able to find it that way. Now, you guys have probably heard that possums hang by their tail. If you see her tail here, um, they can't really hang by their tail. When they're little, they might. Uh, other than that, when they get old, it's they're too heavy. But they use their tail. It's a prehensile tail, and they'll use it for hanging on to things as they're climbing. And if you can see her little feet here, they're really good for climbing also. So they're pretty good climbers, right? Um, and, but they don't really hang from their tail. But you'll notice that they don't have any hair on their tail. And that's actually to help them to hold on when they're using their tail to climbing or to hang on to things. You can see how it's wrapped around my finger. 
They'll actually use their tail to carry hay or grass or things like that to pad their nest. So their tail comes in very handy. All right. So now possums, because they live in the or wetlands, they're actually all over, they live in urban environments and in wetlands. They suffer from when invasive species come in because they can't get to the edge of the water if there's a really uh, big stand of Phragmites or, or um, purple loosestrife, they'll have a really hard time getting to the edge of the water and finding their food. So unfortunately then they're going to come into cities where it's easier to find food. And you'll see them quite often in neighborhoods. Uh, they get in your garbage cans, they'll come in cat doors, eat cat food, dog food, bird food. So um, that's another reason why, unfortunately, you see them a lot of times on the side of the road because possums play possum. You've probably heard that expression. What they do is, as their defense, they used to think that they pretended to be dead. Well, actually, what they do is they get so scared that they faint and they fall over. And when they fall over, they let out a really bad smell. So an animal that would eat a live possum probably would not eat a dead, stinky possum. So it's a pretty good defense. And when they, after they pass out, then they'll eventually come to you and go on their way. All right, well, thank you. Daisy and I will see you later. Well, hello. And today, I first want to thank Daisy for teaching us all about the importance of wetlands and invasive species and how important a possum, which you wouldn't even think um, is so important um, in the food chain. So that's a wonderful thing. This is going to be our project for today. Remember this fun project from the last? Well, you're gonna incorporate it into the project today. So what we need and what you'll get in your kit it's the aluminum foil and the coffee filters, but the, this is special instant paper mache. And I will make sure it's provided in your kit. I wanna show you the journal for the day. This was Mary's. It's Wetlands Are Wonderful. And she decided, see she wants to just kind of sketch in and maybe even find her, um, species that animals that would be in the, the food chain. So here's an example where you, you don't have to draw everything. You can find a picture, cut it out, and then paste it into your journal. And there's lots of ways to do that. You can use birds and all sorts of things. So let's get to the fun part. So you, we have our, our project from yesterday. And this is the instant paper mache. It's non-toxic and it won't hurt you. It does give a little dust off, so you don't want to have your face right over it. And to mix it up, you just put in a little water. Now it does get a little sticky on your hands, but it, it, again, it washes right off. So see, you might see a little dust. And you want to have it like sort of like oatmeal. You don't want it too mushy. If it's too mushy, either add more paper mache, or if you used up all your paper mache, then just let it sit for a while. And these are the animals I made with my paper mache. I made a turtle, a couple fish, a crescent moon, a butterfly, and I was trying to make an insect, the emerald ash borer, close enough. And I also made a bird kingfisher that's somewhere, and I'm sure someone will find it for me. It's around here somewhere. But I did have a bird that I made. So to do this, now this takes overnight to dry. So all I did, these are just flat pieces. You can do it three-dimensional if you want, and start sculpting it into maybe a frog or a turtle or something like that. Just take your time. And it's, if you don't know what something looks like, then just find a picture of it. But if you're a little nervous about it, just start out with a simple shape like a snake. I have a snake I made somewhere. And I'll find it for you. And 
It's just really simple by just melting it and pressing it down. Yeah. Here's my bird. And here's the snake. Now, my snake is breaking up a little bit, but this is paper, so if it is breaks up, you can just glue it back together the next day when it dries. Once it's dry the next day, you just take your brush and you paint and dab. Now, you have to be careful because when you re-wet it, it can become fragile again. So you can just take glue, if it breaks, and put it back together and just let it dry. So there's kind of a snake. Here is my bird. You know, it, it takes a few minutes. I'm doing it in quickly, but you, you really just need to just get an idea, a feel for it. So sometimes just doing simple shapes just to get an idea of the material and how it is, how it works. You can, um, you can lay it out like a fish is kind of easy to make. And as it dries, you can also take a little skewer or a stick, and which you will have, and it'll help you form your pieces. Once they're dry, you take your, this is what we made the other day, the emboss, and you just simply poke a hole. I had a hole launcher, a hole. I had a hole puncher, and but if you don't have that, you can just use scissors. You're creative. You can figure it out. And you just use some string. I found a beaver stick, and then I just started assembling. To assemble, you might need a friend to help you hold it. If not, just lay it down on the table and take your time. And um, start assembling your mobile. This is your wetland food chain mobile. 